it's impossible not to be excited about this partnership. And I felt like I had to sit down for this next conversation. You know, all the information about the St. Jude's Partnership you can find on desk. You can also go to coldwellbanker.com slash St. Jude, which will have details on the partnership as well as the ability to donate today. But don't go there just quite yet because I want you to hear from our next guest. As uh, having worked with St. Jude for the last year and putting this partnership together, one thing you realize is that everyone connected with St. Jude's uh, really lives and breathes the cause and the connection between our brand and theirs around this idea of home is really so strong. So it's my great pleasure to introduce our next guest, who is the Supervisor of Creative Media Services, and not only works at St. Jude's, but has also been a patient there as well. Please welcome Joel Alsop. Joel, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure to join you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. And we got to meet in person uh, a little over a year ago, back when we were meeting people in, in person. Yeah. And I got to hear a bit of your story and the fact that you not only work for St. Jude's, but you've also been a patient at St. Jude's as well. Can you share a bit of your story with our audience? Oh, yeah, absolutely. St. Jude has been part of my life now for more than 30 years. So I've, I've been there with our creative media services team doing video production for the last 17 years of my life, but actually 15 years before that. So we're going on 32 years ago, I came to St. Jude for the very first time. So um, I grew up in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and this was back in December of 1987. Uh, I was living there, right-handed little child, into Cub Scouts, into uh, soccer and baseball and basketball. And right about Christmas time, I started having pain in my right arm and uh, stopped using my right arm. And my parents were very good and very observant. So they took me to my pediatrician. We had an x-ray done uh, from that x-ray. Uh, he saw something in there. He didn't want to panic us just yet. So he sent us to our children's hospital. We had an MRI done. And from that MRI, they could see clearly what was going on, that there was a tumor growing in my right arm and actually grown large enough. It broken a bone near my shoulder, um, which was why I was in pain and stopped using my hand. Fortunately for us, even though the tumor was large, it was still in its early stages. It hadn't spread beyond the arm. Um, we were also very fortunate that the doctor who looked at that uh, scan in Chattanooga had done a fellowship at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So he told my mom and dad, based on the scan, this was probably going to be an osteosarcoma, which is a, a form of bone cancer. Um, what that would mean is probably a year worth of treatment, probably a major surgery would be involved. And he said, but I used to work at St. Jude um, and they have a wonderful protocol for this. I'm going to refer you guys there. We get all this news. My mom and dad both have good jobs and we get, have good health insurance. But this being 1987, this was pre-internet, pre a lot of the good word you hear about St. Jude now. Right. Um, so we didn't know what to expect. We, we trusted the doctor, knew the treatment would be good. But we thought, OK, this is a hospital. It's 350 miles away from home. We're going to need to, my mom and dad are gonna, going to need to get jobs in Memphis. We're going to need to sell our house and cars to pay for this treatment. That's yeah. what we kind of thought. Uh, so we got to stay at home for Christmas, drove across the state just a couple of days later, got to St. Jude and found out. Don't worry about any of that. When we walked in the doors, they told us we're going to pay for all of your son's treatment, all of your travel here, your meals while you're here. So all you have to do is focus on him and helping me get better. So that was just this huge burden lifted off my parents' shoulders to know that my dad could stay in Chattanooga, take care of my brother and sister. They would visit as often as possible that my mom could stay with me in Memphis. Um, and then we'd get to go home about every two weeks or so while I was on treatment. So. Our doctor in Chattanooga was absolutely right. I had about a year worth of chemotherapy treatments to help eliminate the osteosarcoma. And it was about four months into those treatments, the decision was made to amputate my right arm. And that was just hmm. really kind of standard protocol at the time, given the size and placement of the tumor, that's what had to be done to eliminate the cancer. Um, it sounds funny to say, but um, yeah. I was not losing any God-given abilities with this right arm. Even though I was right-handed, I was not in danger of becoming a professional athlete or anything like that. I was probably secretly meant to be a lefty. Um, so. <laughs> I learned I had seven months of treatment after my amputation. Um, yeah. So at St. Jude, it's not just about the chemotherapy. I had physical therapy to help me learn how to use my left hand. I had a homebound teacher who helped me learn how to write with my left hand and keep up with my school assignments. So Incredible. by the time I finished my last bit of chemotherapy, I went right back home to Chattanooga, hopped right from second grade into third grade, didn't miss a beat. Started playing sports I'd never played before. I started playing baseball, I played first base and center field for years. I wasn't the right fielder who just ate grass. I was actually an active member of the team. Um, got, into, got into distance running and I've done triathlons for like the last several years as well. Um, and I've been blessed to come back and work at St. Jude for the last 17 years. And not only that, um, my wife is a former St. Jude patient as well. We got married coming up right at two years ago, uh, actually on the St. Jude campus because 
that's where our families met. We actually met at a St. Jude event. I played the long game. You can see we're talking about, I met her more than 25 years ago. We got married two years ago. It took me a while to tell her how I felt, but luckily she felt the same way. Uh, and, and now we're married and just living an absolutely amazing life because of this wonderful hospital. It's an incredible story. St. Jude's represents such an incredible cause. This idea of not only just the fact that you're not charging anyone for these, for being there and for getting the treatment, but just the community feel and wanting to make these kids still feel like they're home and that they can have these normal lives. I think that's just an amazing cause. Talk to me about how you've seen that uh, remain either constant or even develop over time from being a patient there to now being someone who works there every day. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the, the grasp that I have of what the hospital does is, is so much better now going from being, you know, seven to 40. Now I, I've seen, you know, not only the changes in the hospital, but the way my mind wraps its head around about everything that's done there. I mean, every patient who walks through the doors doesn't receive a bill for, for anything. And that's kids we're treating from all 50 states and from around the world. And not only that, the treatments have progressed now, you know, for patients like mine with osteosarcoma, uh, a lot of times it occurs in the arm and the leg. We can find the tumor uh, in time like mine where it's still localized to the bone. In the vast majority of cases, we can do limb sparing. So the child gets to keep their arm or their leg and not have to go on and worry about that. Um, so it, it's changed drastically. Overall, childhood cancer survival rates have gone from 20% when we opened in, in 1962 to more than 80% today. The, mm -hmm. the most common form of childhood cancer was only a 4% survival rate when we opened in 1962. It's 94% today. Wow. And that's the kind of cancer my wife had. I mean, if she had been treated at St. Jude in the 60s, she wouldn't be here. But but that's oh. what happens. That's because of the donations that fuel St. Jude. That's because of this beautiful family from all walks of life who get involved or, or the reason I'm alive today or the reason my wife isn't alive today. So it just, I can't speak highly enough of what has happened at St. Jude and how much the world has embraced us and how much you guys mean to us because of what you do. I mean, literally, I get to go out on the beach here in another 20 minutes and enjoy this time with my wife and my family yeah. because of you. That's amazing. And, you know, some people say, well, he was treated there. He works there. He found a, found the love of his life there, too. So, of course, he's uh, so positive about the cause and everything that's going on there. But I'll tell you, to a person, every single one of the people that I've met that are connected with St. Jude's, shares that same passion and love and it wants to share the story of St. Jude. So we are so pleased to be able to be part of that and a partner in helping to share the amazing stories and help find cures for these childhood cancers. But share with the Cold Banker Network out there, what does a partnership like this really do? How, how are we playing a role in helping this cause? I mean, you guys are playing an amazing role in this. You, you know, I can talk about their survival rates all day long and how they've increased and, and how our treatments have become better and, and what we can learn as we move forward. But at the end of the day, it's what happens outside of the walls. It's what you guys are playing a part of, you know, like, like I talked about, you know, I get to go join, enjoy time with my family here in a little bit. I, I got to enjoy a beautiful wedding on the St. Jude campus two years ago, you know, 15 years before that I got to graduate college. Um, hmm. You know, four years before that I graduated high school. I've gotten to enjoy um, my wife's children like they're my own and love them like my own. That's that's what you're doing when, when you're parking the St. Jude. It's not just helping provide the treatments that save these kids' lives. It's all the life that comes after. All the favorite moments you can think of from your life, you're literally giving that to the kids who are walking through the doors of St. Jude today. And you can't, you can't put a price tag on that. It is uh, immeasurable and just it's incredible to be part of that and connected with this. And a lot of people said, well, St. Jude's, it's in, it's in Memphis, Tennessee, but having walked on the campus there, and I've seen in the atrium, all the flags that are representative of either doctors or patients there, how is St. Jude's reaching, not just across the country, but across the globe? St. Jude has a huge worldwide impact now. Uh, you know, it's been more than two years ago now. We launched, we, we launched St. Jude Global, where we are now looking at our, our overall goal is by 2030 to have the survival rate for six of the most common forms of childhood cancer to 60% worldwide. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers on it, but we've got several partner sites throughout the world mm -hmm. where we're reaching in, showing them the St. Jude model, sharing our protocols, making sure they're set up to function the way that St. Jude does, because when you look outside of Memphis, when you look outside of the United States, sadly, it's back to those 1962 survival rates I mentioned a little while ago, 20% overall, 
you know, sometimes in the single digits because that type of care isn't available to the families or the type of resources that we have on. So that's what we're trying to do is extend that network beyond just bringing kids to St. Jude, but bringing it to their homes to make sure that kids are being diagnosed and treated in the right way and that we are providing that hope to kids around the world. And that's what I'm most excited about to know that, you know, I can sit in Memphis, Tennessee and have an impact on a child who's thousands of miles away. Amazing. The, you share your research, you're treating childhood cancer, you've created a home away from home for these kids and their families at no cost to them. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased to have this partnership and to be part of this. And you are living proof of the power of St. Jude's, both in treating your cancer, but in how it's helped shape your life and even finding the love of your life. So thank you so much for sharing your story with all of us. And we're excited to get started on this. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. And, and please know, you know, big word we use at St. Jude is family. Know that you all are part of this family now, you know, whether it's spreading the word, whether it's donating, you know, you guys are what makes St. Jude go round. You, you are the fuel that, that makes us go on and gives the next child hope, gives the next child a chance to go on and graduate and get married and have this life after. So thank you so much for being part of St. Jude. Thank you most of all for being part of our family. Oh, it's our pleasure. We're happy to be part of this family. And we're hoping that someday soon uh, we can enjoy more than just a virtual hug and really be a part of this, this family in person at St. Jude's. So thanks again, Joel. My pleasure. Thank you all so much. So be sure to go to cobaltbanker.com slash St. Jude to not only find out more information, but to donate today. Whatever you can give possible would be great to help this incredible cause. <laughs>